Well, greetings, Mr. Colazar's class. Our last section on solutions is going to be on colligative or colligative properties. Colligative properties we're going to be looking at are physical properties that are changed by the number of particles or their concentration, but not what they're actually made of. So we're going to look at vapor pressure, boiling, and freezing points of the colligative properties. So colligative properties, physical properties of solutions that are changed due to the number of solute particles or the concentration, but not the solute's identity or what it actually is. So to look at this idea as we go with concentration, so the more particles, the more it's going to affect it. So the three things we're going to look at, vapor pressure. Now vapor pressure, if we have a closed container, you can have liquid starting out that's going to be able to move and become a gas. Now as that builds up, we have an equilibrium between the gas particles in the air and the liquid down below, and they can kind of move back and forth between those two to get to a balanced point. If we add more particles in, say we add some glucose in, that glucose is going to hinder the gas from being able to move from a liquid to a gas form or a gas back to a liquid. So if we just have water, we have a much larger vapor pressure versus if we have sugar water, that's interfering with the liquid becoming a gas and we have a much lower vapor pressure. The two we're really concerned with though are the freezing point and boiling point. Now if we add particles, so if we add more particles in, the normal freezing point of a liquid decreases because the solute particles get in the way of the liquid trying to arrange themselves into a solid. Remember trying to get into that solid crystalline form. So as the particles try to kind of lock into place to become a solid, the other particles get in the way and that allows us not to arrange in there so it's going to lower the freezing point. So freezing point depression depresses to go down or to be lower. So freezing point depression, more particles lowers freezing point. Good example of this would be sidewalk salt. Now what it's doing, sidewalk salt is going to lower freezing point of water. And with it lower, it's going to make ice freeze or water freeze to ice at a lower temp. Kind of got messy there. So we put sidewalk salt out in the winter time so that we get less ice in our driveways and our sidewalks because it lowers that freezing point. Ice will, or water will still freeze to ice, but it takes a lower temperature. The other one, adding particles to um, our solution, is boiling point elevation. Elevation will be to increase. So normal boiling point of a liquid increases because it takes more energy for those particles to escape to become a gas. So those particles wanting to, you know, get warmer and escape are going to be trapped and hooked in here more because they're going to hold the liquid from allowing it to actually escape. So boiling point elevation gives us a higher boiling point or it would increase. So water would instead of boiling at 100 degrees Celsius, now it might be at 100 and, you know, 2 point something degrees Celsius. So it'll increase the boiling temperature of whatever it's dissolved into. This is all by, again, number of particles. So comparing molecular to ionic compounds. Ionic compounds are always going to make a positive and negative when they're dissolved. Molecular compounds just stay as one molecule. So if we notice like sodium chloride, when we dissolve sodium chloride versus when we dissolve um, glucose, we now have the positive and negative parts. So we get two parts or 16 total particles. So versus glucose molecule 
or psionic, when we start out with 8, we end up with 8. So we get much more impact from the ionic because we're looking at the number of particles. We get way more particles with our sodium chloride. And then if we continue that idea, sticking with ionic, sodium chloride gets us 16 particles. Calcium chloride, CaCl2, gets us 8 calciums. But then we get that 2 here we actually end up with 16 chlorines or 24 total particles and again the glucose we started out with 8 as a solid and we have 8 when it becomes an aqueous or dissolved in water so we only get 8 particles from there so we get way more from the ionic compound factors or colligative properties from ionic compounds. And in this case, calcium chloride actually is sidewalk salt, which helps us out more than regular salt. And that ends our chapter on solutions, uh, finishing up with the colligative properties or physical properties by the particle number, not what it actually is.